Hey guys, Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com with another video to help you become a confident PLC programmer and a confident automation professional. So today's topic uh, I'm excited about and that's because it's something that I'm learning more about and getting better at myself and that is structured text programming. So most of the programming I've done in my career has been using ladder logic and that is a great uh, programming language for PLCs and I definitely recommend that you learn it um, because it's basically the original program that was designed for PLCs and uh, you need to know it to be uh, good with automation systems that are existing right now. Um, it's also fairly easy to learn for electricians and technicians who have some familiarity with electrical circuits so um, for that reason I think it's good as well. Structured text is totally different. Uh, you can accomplish the same things, obviously, but the way you set it up is totally different than drag-and-drop ladder logic. So this is a what I would say is a modern PLC or PAC programming language. And it looks uh, very similar to traditional computer programming languages like Visual Basic or C++. Um, but we're not going to waste any more time talking about it. I just want to dive right into a program, set up some simple logic, and so you can see how it works. So as you can see, I'm here in Studio 5000 Logics Designer. And this is just a raw program we have here. And so we're going to create a program, create some routines, and show you how this works. So just a quick side note. If you don't have access to Studio 5000 Logics Designer, but you want to learn to use it, you want to learn to do structured text inside Studio 5000, you have two options. Either, I guess maybe three options, if you uh, have a work computer or something that has it on it, you could um, access it that way. But I'm assuming you don't. So two options, you can go buy it from Rockwell uh, through a distributor, and if you want the structured text functionality, the software's going to cost you probably $5,000 or more. It's insane, I know, but uh, that's what they charge. Um, or the other option you have, as of the recording of this video, is you can join my PLC Training Academy, which is the membership that I've created uh, for people who want to learn PLCs. And for all the members in the Academy, you get access to my software licenses through the uh, wonders of the internet. We can make it work and you can get access while you're enrolled in the Academy. It's a membership um, to the licenses. Use Studio 5000, including Studio 5000 with structured text editing and so on. So it's pretty cool. That costs $37 a month. Compare that to $5,000, $6,000 that you'd have to pay for uh, Studio 5000 with structured text editing and the emulator, um, which I give you access to as well. You'll see all that in action here in this video. Just wanted to make that plug. Um, it really is a no-brainer if you want to learn Studio 5000. I don't know of any other training system that is offering this to the students, so definitely take advantage of this if you want to become a confident PLC programmer. Okay, moving on. I still want to give you some free value in this video. Um, so let's dive right in. So here we are inside the software. Um, and so I want to create a new program. So first thing is go to task, add new program. And we'll call this structured text learning. Okay, and then we open up the program and we want to add a new routine. So I'm going to add three routines. Um, I always like to add a main routine that can jump to other routines. And so we will make this just the regular ladder diagram. And then we're going to add two more routines. Structured version. Oops. We'll make that ladder version since I made it a ladder logic type routine. 
and then add new routine and then we need to change the type to structure text and again not every version of studio 5000 allows this option uh, I recently upgraded my license to do that um, so structured version okay so then the main routine um, we're gonna create jump to subroutine ladder version so I only want to jump to either the ladder version or the structured version um, not both at the same time because they're actually going to be doing the same thing okay so let's open up structured version and get started here um, okay so I've opened up the structured version routine that I created and we're gonna create some real real simple logic so um, it's all about knowing the right syntax for your programming logic so syntax if you don't know what that word means um, I don't have a dictionary definition but I could pull it up here real quick basically it means um, the the format that you're writing it in so uh, different programming languages use different syntax so I just did a quick Google search here I'm gonna pull this over here and the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language so usually this is talking about languages that you speak um, however this could also apply to programming languages okay so that's what syntax means it's basically the proper arrangement of the words so uh, this simple logic example what we're gonna do is we're going to start a motor when a push momentary push button is pressed and then we're gonna stop that same motor when a momentary stop push button is pressed okay so this is super simple to write so we're gonna do we're gonna use if else constructs is what they're called um, also known as if else statements so it's going to look like this if start PB okay so you have to have a tag called start PB which I happen to whoops edit start PB hey why aren't you letting me do this well we'll get to that in a moment here edit start PB okay so I already created a tag called start PB it's a bool you'll need to do that if you're creating this logic obviously so if start PB which implies if start PB is 1 or true then I've got another tag here created called motor run relay so this is an output that turns on a motor we're going to set it equal to 1 and if okay so that's what that's what uh, the logic looks like in structured text if start PB is 1 it's assumed uh, then motor run relay set it to 1 which means turn on the motor run relay so that's what that looks like so then just a couple things to notice on the syntax again that word setting it equal to we need a colon and an equal sign to set motor run relay to whatever's on the right side of that uh, those two symbols and then to end any uh, line that you're going to execute uh, you put a semicolon so for whatever reason um, you don't put it at the end of this if then statement here at the top I guess because it's incomplete um, but you do put it after the instructions that you are executing and then at the end of the if statement you put it there as well okay so that's the first part we're starting the motor now we're gonna create a second if else statement um, to stop the motor so if stop PB again I created this tag earlier and you can see it's created uh, because it recognizes it if you hover over it if it's uh, not created for instance, if I put that in there, you'll see a red undefined tag 
similar to what you would see in ladder logic. So then you could right click it, create your new tag, etc. But I've already got the stop PB tag created. So then we're going to go to motor run, not motor run, relay set equal to zero. So we want to shut it off when the stop push button is pressed. So end if, and just a quick note, the um, uppercase, lowercase, it doesn't matter when you're doing these if then statements, uh, either will work the same. So you could make this uppercase, it accepts it, no problem. Or you can make the first letter uppercase, whatever. I prefer to just make everything lowercase. Okay, so that's um, some really simple logic. So let's let's uh, just test this out real quick. So I'm going to download to the emulator, and we're going to see if this works the way we expect it to. Okay, so I've got my emulator pulled up. Oops, just clicked away from it. Studio 5000 Logics Emulate. Again, my PLC Training Academy members get access to this software as well which allows you to basically use your computer as a PLC and download your programs, test your programs um, right on your computer. So I'm going to go to download because um, my path is already set up here. Communication path is set up to go to the emulator. Download. Okay, download is complete. We're in remote program mode. We're going to switch to run mode. And one cool thing about structured text programs is since you can't uh, see the status of the tags in the logic here, it pulls up a watch window for you automatically um, so you can see what the tags do or manipulate them while you're looking at the logic. So um, I'm going to toggle the start PB on. So I'm going to enter a 1 there. And you can see the motor run relay turned on. I'm going to turn off the start PB, so remember this is a momentary push button, so we release the button, making that input zero, motor run relay stays on. Okay, that's what we wanted. Now we want to see if it stops when we hit the stop push button. So enter a one for stop PB, enter, turns off the motor run relay, it went to zero there. So I'll release the stop push button, and the motor run relay stays off. Okay, so um, there's how you would do it. I'm sorry, structured text. So real quick, let's just look at what that translates to in ladder logic. So sometimes simple logic like this, it just makes more sense to do it in ladder logic. Because um, it's very visual, it's really simple. Um, structured text is generally better for more complicated programs, but you can still use it for stuff like this. So anyway, we're going to enter start PB as an XIC and motor run relay on an OTL or latching output. There it is, output latch is what they call it. Copy, paste, stop PB. We're still going to use the motor run relay, but we're going to make this an OTU to unlatch the output. And then we're going to send that. So this logic should work, but first we need to go to our main routine and we're going to block. I like to use an AFI, an always false input instruction. Block the structured version routine so it's not conflicting with the latter version routine. And then you can do control T to toggle on the start PB. You can see the motor run relay is now one, it's on. And when we want to stop it, control T to toggle it off. Okay, that's really easy. In this case, you may be thinking, why wouldn't you just do ladder logic? In this case, I probably would. Um, but as you can see, you can translate between the two, and there's different ways to program some. Each language has its strengths and weaknesses. So. That's that simple example. So now we're going to build on this example. And what we want to do is we don't want to be able to start the motor if the stop PB is pressed. So let's say somehow um, the start and stop button aren't in the same place. Well, that would probably be 
a dumb design, but we don't want the start button to start the motor if the stop button is being pressed. Okay, so we want to modify this logic. And so we'll, we'll modify it in the ladder first, and then we'll translate it to the structured in, the, in this example. So real simple in the ladder, we just say start PV, XIC, and then we want to make sure stop PV is not pressed. So we use a XIO, or normally closed contact, if you want to look at it that way. That's going to block the start PB from running. So why is it giving me that error? OK, so there's the logic change. So if we toggle on the start PB, it works. We toggle on the stop PB, it stops the motor. That's good. Now if we leave the stop PB on, start push button on, and we try to start the motor again, toggle it on. So you can see nothing happens because we are blocking it from operating. Uh, this path is blocked. Okay, so that's the structured text version. Let's go back here. And we're actually going to switch this AFI. Cut and paste. So that now we're blocking the latter version. So we go to structured text version. So the way to change this logic is super simple. In this if statement, all we do is start PB. So if start PB and, so we use the word and not stop PB. So start PB implying one. So if start PB is one and not stop PB1, so in other words, stop PB is not one, or it's zero, then we'll turn on the motor run relay. Okay, so let's see if this logic works. So start PB, turns on the motor, set it back to zero, then we go to stop PB to turn it off, set it to one, hit enter, shuts off the motor, I'm going to leave that start PB, or I'm sorry, the stop PB on. See if I can toggle on the start PB. So I'll just enter a 1, hit enter. And as you can see, the motor run relay does not start because this statement is not true. If start PB is 1, which it is, and not stop PB, so stop PB needs to be 0, it's a 1, so this if statement is not true, so it will not set this to 1. Okay, so there's a really basic intro to structured text. Um, I was going to get more into some doing some math in structured text, but we don't have time for that in this video. We may do another video in the future. Or I recommend that you check out my PLC Training Academy. Um, and the primary course in there is called the Confident PLC Programmer Method. We have structured text training in there to help you get confident with structured text programming and you can learn more about uh, more advanced stuff in there so check it out hope you found this video helpful and that it helps you get closer to your goal of becoming a confident plc programmer thank you for watching and we'll see you in the, the uh, 